Most developers dive right into creating tables or drawing ER diagrams when they start designing a database. But that's like building a house without a blueprint. If you want to save hours of frustration later, you can start with the step I'll share in this video. So if you've ever started a new project or a new feature for an existing project and felt overwhelmed by the database, you're not alone. I've been there. And each time I want to design a database, I start with this exact step. I'll even show you what comes after this step later in this video. So what is this first step? Before you open a database tool, just write two to three sentences describing what your database is about. You can write it in a text editor, your notes program, or a piece of paper. It doesn't matter. Why does this work? First of all, it helps to define the purpose of the database. Writing this down makes you think about what the database is about or what purpose it serves. You'll describe the goal and what it will store at a high level. It's much easier to understand the purpose of the database if it's written down than in your head. It also sets a clear scope for the database. If you describe what the database is used for, it can help you understand what is included and what is not. Sure, it's only high level for now, but it can help to answer some scope questions you may have now or later. Finally, it forces you to think conceptually instead of technically. Why does this matter? Shouldn't we get into the technical stuff first? Well, it makes your life easier if you can define the concepts of what the database will be used for before we jump into the code, as you'll get a better understanding of what needs to be done. You'll also save time later. Here is an example. Let's say I wanted to design a database for a bookstore. This is how I could describe it. This database will store customer orders for an online bookstore. Each customer can place multiple orders. Each order contains one or more books. It's a simple description. It doesn't define the entire functionality of the database, but we can see that it's going to be used for an online bookstore and there's a focus on customers and orders. It's not a database for a library or a book publishing company or a video streaming company. Before we move on to the next step that you can do, I have a couple of tips for you. First, pretend that you're explaining this to a colleague or a stakeholder. This helps you keep the language simple and easy to communicate. Also, don't worry about perfect grammar or using the right jargon. The goal is to describe the purpose of the database, not to create a document for approval. Now that you have your description, the next step is to look at the description and highlight the nouns. These are often the first clues to your database tables. Here is the example description from before. The nouns are words that represent things. They are the entities in the real world and they often become tables in the database. In this example, the nouns are customer, order and book. So this is a good start for your database. You can highlight these words as nouns. You've just identified the core structure of your database without opening a single tool. Once we have this, we can start creating our database design. I'll open a blank page in my favourite tool for designing ERDs called Lucidchart. I'll add a box for each of these three nouns, which can be our tables. From here, we can start refining the relationships between these tables or entities. We would need to think about the answers to some questions. Does a customer have many orders? Can a book appear in more than one order? That's when you can start elaborating your ERD and thinking about primary keys and foreign keys. This is a great start, but before we go any further, it's just as important to know what not to do. You'll want to watch this video next, where I explain some of the most common database design mistakes so you can avoid them right from the start. Thanks for watching.